In the first video of this series, we introduced the Smith chart and used it to solve the common problem of impedance matching at a single frequency. In this video, we will explore the use of the Smith chart to understand impedances which vary with frequency. We will use the example of a simple dipole antenna which has been tuned to work in the 80 meter amateur radio band. SimSmith allows the user to read a file which describes the load as a function of frequency. In our example, this load file has been created using a common antenna modeling program called EasyNAC. SimSmith can also read a load file created by the AIM4170 antenna analyzer and support for other analyzers is in development. Let's get started. A load file can be read by clicking on the load button contained in the load circuit element. SimSmith will pop up a screen allowing you to select a file for reading. I'll select the file from EasyNet. Notice that SimSmith has set the lower and upper scan frequencies. It extracted this information from the load file. And it also is putting up a warning here saying that the frequency of 10 megahertz is out of range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this. SimSmith is pretty persistent about this message. Um, and so we'll just get rid of it now. To help this exploration, let's look at the SWR. I'll specify an SWR of 2, which is a pretty common SWR size. SimSmith can actually draw this circle around other impedances. For example, I could set it around 75 ohms. Um, this has uses in other matching situations, but the typical answer is to put it in the middle, and I'll leave it there. With this SWR circle displayed, I can now sweep the frequencies described by the load file by simply clicking on the Sweep Frequency button. Um, this is a uh, pretty ragged line. This turns out to be because the scan increment is too large, and I can set the scan increment smaller and smooth that out. As we can see here, the, the match 2 to 1 match is relatively narrow. Um, if we look at it using the other format, we can see here that the match is really only about 70 or 80 kilohertz wide. And we can improve upon that simply by doing the normal matching. We're going to perform the match in the way we did before with an L circuit, shunt capacitor. I'm, I want to go back and look at a single frequency. Um, Let's look at uh, 3.715. Um, I picked that because it's the resonant frequency of the antenna. Let's finish up our match here. Uh, we need to adjust this capacitor value. Just as before, need to add our inductor. Just as before. And now we have what is essentially a perfect match at 3.715 megahertz. We can look and see how that has helped widen the SWR bandwidth, which is of course our goal. And we can see that it has increased it from 3.62 to about 3.86. It's about 240 kilohertz wide, which is substantially better than it was before. We can actually make this a little wider by adjusting this. Uh, watch what we can watch what happens to these two lines as we adjust the value of say this inductor you can see this is getting wider in here but our best match is getting worse so here we're trading off bandwidth for best match which is a trade-off that we may choose to make we may choose not to make it depends on how wide the bandwidth you're interested in matching is. In this video, we have used the Smith chart to understand impedances which vary with frequency. We used SimSmith to load an impedance file which was generated by an antenna modeling program. We then used the Smith chart to perform an impedance match and explored how to widen the impedance match by adjusting the values of the matching circuit. In the next video, 
we will explore how to model an antenna feed line and see how the Smith chart can help us improve our antenna performance in some unexpected ways.